Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. And in this video, what I wanted to do is break down where you and I should be investing in the UK right now. So I get these questions all the time. You know, where do you think's best? Do you think of this area? What do you think of that area? And often people are picking areas way after that they should actually go in. And this is maybe because of articles and saying, oh, Manchester's got all this going on. It's like, yeah, that's why you should have got in five years ago. So I wanna break down, got my laptop in front of me as well. So you'll be seeing a little bit of me, a little bit of the screen and breaking down exactly what to look out for. Before jumping into that, what would be amazing if you are new to the channel and you're interested in no BS property investment advice, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. And if you get value from this video, make sure to smash that like button and let me know what you thought of the video in the comments as well. Before we jump into what we're actually, what areas to look for, you need to know the outcome and the criteria. Now, you'll hear me saying this over and over again, and I apologize for repeating myself, but it's just the way it is. Like The reason I'm repeating myself on this is because it works. So before you jump into an investment, into an area, you need to understand what you're actually looking for. So are you looking for the highest cash flowing opportunity for your money going in the property? Are you looking for the long term sustainable wealth in a property? How much money do you have to invest in property? And what capital growth are you looking to achieve in your property investment? All of this is really going to dictate different things. So for example, if I'm already financially free and I don't need to rely on the cash flow from property, then maybe I'll pick areas where actually there's real strong capital appreciation opportunity there. Whereas if I'm relying on the property as an investment to replace my income and have a little bit more freedom and flexibility in my life, then I'm probably not going to be investing in buy to lets in central London. OK, so by understanding the outcome of what you're looking for, it's going to help direct where it is that you're going to end up getting results in the opportunity right now. OK, so now that you have your criteria, the next thing is working out where not to look at. So I know this sounds really trivial, but actually sometimes cancelling out and reducing the decision fatigue that we've got is really going to help you make some more decisions. So the areas that I'm not interested in is the ones that have had historically no capital growth. So I'm going to give an example here in the Northeast. So the, the Northeast overall, there's some fantastic investment opportunities. Darlington, for example, Newcastle, some other areas that are just amazing. Some of the Shields areas are great. However, you'll notice if you invest in the Northeast, there's some areas of the Northeast where property values are about 35 to 40,000 pounds. Now, I know if you're from London, you're thinking, well, I can't buy a bloody shed for that down here, right? But ultimately, the reason they're 35, 40 grand and have been for the last 30, 40 years and will be for the next 30, 40 years ahead of us is nobody wants to actually buy and live there. Because if people have got jobs that are paying them well enough, they aren't going to pick though that area to live. OK, it, it just doesn't work like that. Instead, they're going to save up a bit of a deposit and move to a slightly nicer area, more in those areas, 60, 70 grand properties where they can actually get a mortgage. On that note, those sort of property prices, you cannot get a mortgage on them a majority of the time. So you've got minimum lending criteria, which at, the, which at the moment is about 50 grand lending. That's not even the purchase price, that's the lending price. So 75% loan to value, which means your ideal purchase price is going to be about 60, 65,000 pounds, just to give you a rough idea. So what that means is you're having to buy cash. So you're thinking, oh, great, cheap property for 40 grand or 39,999, so we don't pay any stamp duty. But actually, no, because you're having to buy it cash. If you leverage that, you'd be able to use the same 40 grand to get 120,000 pound plus property, including a little refurb, legals, fees, etc. So personally, I stay away from those areas. I also stay away from areas where they've got really high LHA rates in the area. And I'll show you in a, in a moment on the laptop how we're going to find those. And it's not the fact I don't like LHA tenants. I've got a decent portion of my portfolio rented to local housing authority tenants or allowance tenants. It's more the fact that if you've got a hardcore majority LHA areas, those are the types of areas where the types of LHA tenants maybe aren't the most desirable. OK, now it's not for me to have an opinion on that. That's down to you. It's just areas that I don't focus my energy. 
energy on. So now that we've covered where not to go for and the price ranges to stick away from, how do we find the areas that we do want to be looking for? Okay, so we're going to jump into the laptop now and what I'm going to look at is something called street check. Now, if you want to spend a bit of money and it's only like 13, 14 quid a month. So if you're already involved, you definitely want to look at this propertydata.co.uk. Massive fan. But if we go for street check for now, and you'll be able to see this as it's coming up on the laptop. Hopefully it is recording the screen. Okay, let's jump in on this. And then what we're going to do is type in a basic location. Let's go for LS6 area. And then when we're going through this, you'll be able to see, maybe it's a bit too broad. Here we go. You're going to be able to see this area. So this is an area called Haddon Place in Leeds, LS4 in Kirkstall, just off of Kirkstall Road, as we can see there. There it is. Um, and then what we're going to see is all of this area about it. So I like looking at the demographics of this area and you don't need to go this narrow. You can look overall. Now, the first thing I'll say is I already know the first type thing you're going to go on is crime in the area, which there's 131. This will be in any area. OK, so you don't need to worry too much about this. But what I want to look at is number one, housing type. So you can see a majority of this area is terrace properties. In fact, 119 out of 126 properties in that postcode are terrace. But what I'm really interested in is people and employment. So first of all, people. I don't care about the gender. Um, I kind of don't care much about the age groups, although you can look into that. What I'm interested in is the social grading. OK. So what we've got at the bottom of this social grading is class DE, and that social grade is semi-skilled and unskilled manual workers. OK, so it's going to give you an idea that a decent chunk, you know, is of this is actually C1, which is supervisor level. So junior managerial, administrative, that sort of thing. They're professional positions. And that's really good. And that's what we're really looking for in an area. It shows that people are in not so much blue collar positions, but positions where people are advancing and developing. The next I'm going to look at employment. So you can see here the economic activity in this area is 114 out of 255. So a good proportion, it's this dark blue here, are in full time employment. And in fact, let's look at the unemployment in this area. It's only seven out of 255. That's really low unemployment. But full time student 65. So again, it gives a good range of this area where you can see there's working professionals, but there's still around 25% of the market there that are students as well. So now that we've got some local demographics in this area, and I have a little look around, by the way, look at the housing, people, culture, crime in the area. Um, and you can see it usually on a map um, when you're going in. So you can see all of this antisocial behavior, violence, you know, the usual. Um, but the next thing we're going to look at is right move. So specifically, what I'm going to be looking at here is on rentals. I want to see the rental demand in the area. So if I go to the LS4 area and look here and what I want to do is let's do plus quarter of a mile. And just as a very brief check in the quarter of a mile, there are 2000 results of LS4. That's probably a bit too much then, isn't it? We go to zero miles, one, 447 results. OK, so we're looking at that as a rough number and then we're going to go on filters and go on include let agreed. Now, let agreed, there's 598. So 25% of the market is let agreed already. And if we take some of these away, it narrows it way down. 49 results let agreed. And if we take off let agreed, 34. Okay, so around 25% of the market is rented out. That's an okay average. But what we're looking for is a good idea of how much of the market is actually renting out on a consistent basis. Now, what I'm going to be careful of in this area is making sure that if I'm buying buy to let, that I'm taking student lets out of the area. So there's going to be a load of HMO in this area, which is absolutely fine. But I just want to factor that in. The next thing I want to do is jump over to property for sale. And this is going to tell me the same similar sort of story. So if we go here and we can see in this area, there's 
28 properties there. And if I include subjects, uh, sold subject to contract, there's 97 there. What that means is there's 97 properties in that area right now around, what is that, 60, 90, 69, 69 out of the available 97 are sold subject to contract. That is amazing for an area. What that's showing me right now is that how many people are interested in buying in that area and how active the market is. That's great from a rental point of view. If you've got a buy to let, knowing that worst case scenario, you can sell it and by the looks of it for probably more than you bought it for because there's a lot of demand in that area. And that's what I'm definitely looking for. But that's just the actual online stuff. What I'd also want to do is call local letting agents, call estate agents. So I know in that area, at the moment, the rentals are renting about £100 more than you're listing for. So you're getting so much demand for your rentals and it's an absolute frenzy for buying right now. Okay, so that's looking at the buying and rental market on there and obviously talk to people as well. The next thing I want to look at is actual maps. Okay, so if we go on maps right now, and just look at this logically. So we can see Burley here, it's in this sort of Kirkstall area, but having a look around it, what's going on? And this is really about the infrastructure and the layout of the area. So if I look, you know, how close is it to town? Well, Leeds is there. Amazing. What um, infrastructure do you have around it? So I know you've got, um, You've got hospitals, which you can see here, just Leeds General Infirmary there. You've got massive shopping parks. You've got motorways and A roads coming in and out, which you can see going across to Bradford, um, over to Harrogate at the top, Sheffield down the bottom, Wakefield, all of these areas. And really, I know Leeds very well. So anywhere within this sort of triangle here is going to be a great investment area. But you're always looking at the infrastructure of what you're going through in the area. Now, the main five that I'm looking for are motorways, number one. Number two is going to be hospitals. Number three is going to be universities. Number four is train links. So that you've got great train links along here and you can see the train line going from Kirkstall to Burley straight into Leeds city centre. And all you really need to look at is National Rail to see how well connected Leeds is overall as an area. You can get across to Manchester, Liverpool, York, um, the North East, down to um, Peterborough, London in like two hours, um, in less than two hours now. So it's a really well connected area. The final thing that I'd be looking at from a logistics point of view and an infrastructure point of view is what's going on in the area. So for me, what major companies are going there? Now, you may not know this about Leeds, but just as an example, Channel 4 have decided to move their headquarters, move it from London to um, Leeds. And it's actually right here on Wellington Street. And it's absolutely massive. It's around 3,000 employees. Now, you might think, okay, that's one company. What's the big deal there? Well, actually, it's pretty huge because... What that means is a load more employ employees come into town, it's well paid, it's going to contribute massively to the infrastructure, it means they're going to have to improve the infrastructure, more tenant demand, more purchasing demand, and the supply is only keeping up to a certain level. And as you know from watching my other videos, if there's limited supply and the demand for an area is just increasing, 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 then the price of the properties, the price of rents is going to go up. And then what happens is when you've got this area here on on my map where there's a flood of people and that driving pro, uh, price because of the demand and limited supply, what happens is it just goes out and benefits all of the areas surrounding that. So not just within the A612 and A64, which I'm showing you here, but the other areas as well. So Castleford, Pontefract, Wakefield, Huddersfield, Bradford, Rip and whatever, all of those surrounding areas get positively impacted from that increased demand in the local vicinity. Then the, the final thing that we're going to look at is just Googling the area. So if we said development plans 
in Leeds, for example, you're going to get a really good idea. So I'm not going to go through the Leeds local plan right now. But if we go through this, the core strategy, the allocation plans, resources, waste, air value area action plan, development scheme, and you can do this for your area that you're thinking about, there's actually a lot of information here. And it's basically the local council telling you what they want to achieve in their area. And it's also showing you where they're lacking right now and where they need some help. So what I like doing is adding this to a map um, in my Google My Maps and it will show you everything. So you can see here the main investments, 53 billion per year, the local economy, Barnsley, Bradford, Col uh, Calderdale, City of York, Craven, Harrogate, Kirkley, Selby, North Yorkshire County Council and Wakefield. Um, and you can read through that and it's going to tell you the development in the area. Now, if there's not a lot happening in the area, does that mean you shouldn't invest there? No, but it's going to give you a really good overview of what a town's looking to achieve. And in my opinion, the more they're looking to do and achieve in the area, the more money they're funding into it, the better it's going to be. So let me just wrap that up so you've got a bullet point list of what to go away with. And then I'm going to give you the top five areas that I love right now and where I'm looking for myself and my investors. So let me just make sure I've got it all. So number one, focus on your outcome and your criteria. If you don't have criteria and understand what you're looking to achieve, it's going to be really difficult to figure out what you need to do in the first place. Number two, figure out the areas within that that you don't want to look at. So for me, if there's a lack of infrastructure, a lack of investment, um, and the properties are too cheap, i.e. below 50 grand, that's going to be a no-no area for me because it's showing a historic lack of capital growth, which usually dictates a lack of future growth as well. Number four, um, look at the rental demand. So I like doing this by going on Zoopla and right move and talking to agents. Look at what properties are on versus what properties have let, but also talk to local agents anyway, because they'll be able to give you a really good feel. The same as with estate agents and right move for properties for sale. Look at what's there, look at what's selling, look at what's sold subject to contract already. Finally, just look on Google Maps and look at the local infrastructure. So I want to look at the local development plan. I want to look at what hospitals are nearby, what motorways are nearby, what um, universities are nearby, what train links are nearby. So just logistically, how easy is it getting to and from that spot as an overall town? And if you tie all of that together, it's going to give you a really good scope of where to be investing right now. The final thing is any big shops, and I mean big moves by players. So in Leeds, we've got Channel 4, for example, which is a massive company in the UK, massive amounts of money going into their headquarters, massive amounts and influx of demand from people that are going to be buying, spending and renting in the local area, which is obviously an overall contribution um, to the factor of why you should buy in the area. So what I'm going to do is wrap up with my five biggest places that I'm focusing on around my area right now. And what would be cool is if you've got value from this video, make sure to smash that like button. If you're not subscribed already and you want some more no bullshit investment advice around property, make sure to hit the subscribe and the notification bell. And I'm going to tell you my five areas now, but it'd be really cool to know what are your top five areas that you're going to be looking into over the next three to five years. So mine are Wakefield, south of Leeds, Huddersfield, Oldham, and a southern city, which is Swanscombe because of all of the generation that's going on there right now. So those would be my five top picks in the UK right now. But what I'm interested in is what would be your top five. Let me know in the comments now. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.